Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Now, here we are once again. This is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 34 for February the 17th, 2020. I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, my two best artist friends. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. And we are off with a very energize podcast this episode is going to be a uh, history making episode at least i hope so might be a little bit longer than our other ones because we got a lot to cover for before we get started a little bit of history diane and i and constance we all met through a online course that we took with paul klein with the and you can find out find out more information up from about Paul Klein at uh, Kleinus at KleinArtistWorks.com. And um, we were so energized after taking that course that we decided to continue meeting to keep ourselves inspired and motivated. Paul, I kind of consider him kind of like a guru. Um, his focus of his course, it was not so much as specific strategies to take to advance an artist's career, but to look into yourself as an artist and decide what direction you want to take your career. And like he talks about, uh, there are many art villages, very career in, in the art world uh, segments that an artist can be successful in. And that's pretty much what the, uh, the, the gist of the course. And he's, an excellent coach. He's been in the business for 50 some years and, um, he had, uh, he has tons and tons of video webinars as he calls them interviews with the movers and shakers in the art community. And recently he announced, I guess he's going to start making those public. So, uh, we may, uh, be, uh, presenting, uh, some of his videos and talking about uh, some of the, uh, artist interviews. Of course, you know, in the meantime, we've kind of followed his same model uh, as he did in the course, uh, finding videos from off of uh, YouTube of uh, artists' recommendations. And Sergio Gomez is kind of like is our favorite because he seems to offer some of the best tips. Of course, Stefan Bauman. And then, of course, we uh, watch videos for of uh, Gary Vaynerchuk giving his speeches to you know, get us off our butts and slap us in the face, get motivated. And, 
and, and do art. One of the uh, videos I came across this last week from Sergio Gomez, actually it was a two a combination videos, and he described basically how to find art collectors. And for our listeners, you have to visualize a triangle or like a pyramid. And what got me excited was that Diane Constance and I, we have been kind of following this model without realizing it. I don't know if we were, we were influenced by Sergio, but I know we were certainly influenced by some of the uh, recommendations and talks from Stephen Bauman and from uh, Gary Vanacek because it all, it all comes together. You know, you have to, uh, consider multiple sources when pursuing your art career, especially in this, uh, modern times, but visualize in your mind, a triangle at the very top of the triangle is your high level, your high end art collectors. These are art collectors that go to fairs and galleries and they, some of them are millionaires, but not all but they are extreme, extremely passionate about art and about collecting art. And um, they're also the most difficult you know, to reach. The next level down is your moderate collectors. They're also passionate about art and they buy art between a hundred and thousand dollars or more, but not as often as the serious high end collectors, but they're still important. And then at the very bottom of the triangle is your casual collector. Uh, collector. Your casual collector buys art once in a while, and usually the lower end, you know, the smaller pieces that uh, don't cost, you know, cost as much. And they're starting to get into the art collecting. And they also have passion for art. Now, Obviously, obviously, the objective for any working artist is to want to reach that top level. However, it's really difficult. And unless you have a tremendous amount of money and the right connections, you, know, you just, in the beginning, you may get lucky, but for the most part, most of us are in, are in the other levels. Now, for Diane and Constance, have any of you ever reached that top level? Have you sold art to the highest, to the high end level yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> no, I I've, I've been in some shows where people like that come, but I didn't have anything purchased myself. Okay. What about that moderate collector? You know, that, uh, that one, that, uh, you know, one piece, <laughs> one piece, one or two piece. You know, they only they're starting to collect. Have you even reached that level yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're looking at the pyramid, you're the the point is at the top, and that's the the ones that the people that can afford to buy and are like really serious about collecting and um, the investment value and things like that of paintings. And there's a lot less of them. And then as you move down the triangle, you, the, you're going towards the base, so it gets wider. So there's a lot more of a pool of people in each section as you go to the bottom. So, you know, there's there's more people in that middle section, and there's more, more people, again, in the bottom section. <laughs> so the closer you are to the bottom, the more likely you are to have somebody buy something. From there. Exactly. In fact, that's what made me jump out of my chair when I watched those videos, because I know that all three of us, have at least maybe one or two pieces in the in the moderate level and most of our work comes mm -hmm. from that casual collector all of us have reached that ca that casual collector now the point of sergio's discussion is that for artists not to ignore that casual collector because the casual collectors as you develop develop a relationship with those collectors they move up Always, there's, he has case studies, always they move up. And if you are in their mind and if you have captured their imagination and their appreciation for your art, then you will gradually climb up to that, you know, that higher level. And the whole point is 
persistence, you know, pers persistence, persistence, and to keep at it. All right, now the second part of the video, which I thought was extremely interesting, was, <clears throat> and this is very, very important for us, he drew another another pyramid, but it has uh, a uh, an extra level in there. So visualize in your mind another pyramid, and it's how to sell art to the bottom level, online and offline. Now, at the very top of that pyramid is, as an artist, is the artist, the art. You have to make great art. You have to constantly pursue your craft and improve your craft. And, again, what made me jump out of my chair is all three of us, within the last couple of years, we've been doing that. I have, I don't know if Diane and Constance have noticed it, but I've seen an improvement in their art. I've felt like I've had an improvement in my art. So we are, we're, we are reaching our activities, our meeting every, every week and discussing all the recommended videos and discussing our art. We are actually improving. We are doing this. We are, are, we haven't realized it, but we've been following the Sergio plan through other means and making our own way. The, uh, the second level is that it takes time and to have patience. You have to consistently make your art, consistent, consistently put it out to the market, consistently participate and, you know, and, and utilize the many tools that are available. You know, there are people who have, uh, you know, stigma of Facebook. Well, I don't want to, you know, I don't like what Facebook is doing. Well, like Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, says, um, that's the market. The market doesn't care. The market does not care that you don't like Facebook. If you ignore it, you're ignoring it to your peril. So that's where that comes in, in the line. Now, the extra level on here versus the other pyramid is, you need attention. You need to gather attention. The, uh, the, the level above was an audience. I, you know, besides continue making art, you, you are building your audience and that's what you do with the social, with the social media. Once you build your audience, then you are gaining attention. You gain attention through social media postings, participation in art contests, participation in exhibitions. These are all things that you absolutely have to do. And then the very bottom, once you have that audience and that attention, you have to offer, you have to actually make an offer. You know, it's okay to, to you know, put your art up there, but you got to tell people it's for sale. And, maybe come up with some kind of a special, you know, uh, do a period of small pieces. Diane was doing that. I loved it. Diane, you were showing your, you showed me one time your, your little, um, what five by seven, uh, pieces. And you were thinking about making as, as an offer for people to join your mailing list or something, you know, it's a great idea. You know, things like that. So you have to come up with some kind of an, you know, offer. And that's what got me so excited is we have been doing this. We rather consciously or not that within the last couple of years, we've been making progress in this, in this manner. And I've seen our careers advance. I've seen mine, you know, uh, advance as far as, uh, gaining recognition in these, uh, contests, you know, for, you know, awards, international contests, uh, participating in <laughs> exhibitions. And I've seen an increase in uh, sales at that casual level, you know, and also I got, I've got that one collector in it that, that I would put up in a higher level that uh, has commissioned me for some more work. Um, it's working folks. So uh, Diane Constance, you want to add, you want to add to this? I don't want to be the only one talking on this. <laughs> yeah, I think, one of the most important things to remember is that sometimes you're doing all this work and and 
putting things out there and it doesn't seem like anything's happening at all <laughs> for a long time and you have to just keep at it hoping you know that something's going to work <laughs> and you don't know what is and what isn't and it just takes a long time it's like it doesn't happen instantly so you have to just keep plugging along and plugging along <laughs> and plugging along yeah and uh, it kind of eventually starts snowballing a little bit and you know things start happening and you wonder then then you start wondering well what was it that worked you know but so much time has passed since you started doing things you, you don't realize like what exactly it was so you kind of have to try to keep track of um changes you've made and when you've done the changes and um keep track of your um like analytics of what's happening so you can know what things worked and what didn't absolutely um, it's kind of like you you know you should probably uh, uh one recommendation that i heard a uh, an artist coach he said um he said create a journal you know have a have a written journal you know write down you know some of your major events and major achievements and kind of keep track of those and uh that way you can uh, you can look back and if you feel like you're not headed in the right direction that will give you a, a a picture. So that's another way. You know, it's not necessarily real scientific, but uh, it will. Uh, you yeah, know, it's a good way. If if, and the important thing is, um, <clears throat> this strategy that we are pursuing is not any real Pacific. It's a combination. It's a cumulative. You know, and. I was laughing at a posting on my Facebook page that uh, one of my uh, followers posted. Said, "Clyde, you've just you've you've come out of nowhere, you know, <laughs> sudden making it." And I was laughing because they don't know it's been three years that I've been working at this. You know, it's it's not something that just popped onto the scene. I have been actively working and trying this and trying that, and you know, and. It's not a combination. It's not like throwing spaghetti against a wall, seeing what sticks. No, there it's a, it's a there is a uh, a definite overall plan, you know, that's uh, that's moving forward, and uh, I keep track of it for my own sanity, so that I don't get depressed that I'm not making progress, you know. And, uh, Constance, what about you? You want to add add to this conversation? Well, I've been been for the last six months working on my pastel painting uh, because I haven't done any painting for 12 years and and working some more on the oils again oil painting I haven't done and it was I was so rusty and I feel like I'm starting to get gain some ground again you know so I just have to keep plugging away at it until I get better at it again yeah. and you've been doing great i have just been amazed you you've been putting some amazing art out there and this is what got me excited when i saw you know sergio's videos because uh, he said i'm on his mailing list so he sent out a you know a, a mailing list he's starting another course up and these are things that he was mentioned trying to and i'm not you know i'm not going to enroll in his course in fact i don't need to enroll in any more courses we've uh we've gotten enough we we received enough material. All of these co coaches and art mentors out there, one or another is not that much better than the other one. They all say basically the same thing, just in a different way, which is good because it gives. You just have to execute everything, basically. You you jumped ahead. You said exactly. You was reading my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's execution. It's mm -hmm. okay. Now, right now, I'm executing my drawing skills. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Trying to get back on track to see if I can pull it off or not. Yeah, it's it's okay to enroll in a bunch That's of not, courses. not, I'll start making jewelry again. <laughs> this this education and this knowledge, but then if you don't do anything with it, what's the point? You know, and that's. Mm -hmm. you know, I know I can make jewelry. So I remember uh, during the course. Uh, Paul Klein had mentioned something that uh, he told one of the artists. They asked, I forget what the question was. The artist asked him, but he uh, he said, "Well, you you've got to crawl, you, just like you know a baby's you know is learning to walk. Walk, you crawl first, and then you start walking, and you take baby steps. 
And then after that, you start to run, you start to walk, you start to run, start to sprint. So in my, the way I personally feel in my career right now, I've gone through the crawling stage. I'm almost beyond the baby steps and I'm getting ready to sprint. <laughs> That's what I personally feel, you know, that I, uh, you know, but it has been. In my painting life, I've always been torn between two styles and the two styles are the impressionism and the abstract expressionism and i have always been torn between which way to go i love both of them so much i don't know which one to go with and Do both. i don't know how to pick a side Do them I never both. Have known how to pick a side <laughs> there's, no, there's nobody see and this is the thing i so many times i i've uh listened to uh you know different coaches and different, you know, artists, you know, I've watched the YouTube. I know, but even Klein they, said they talk, they talk they about spot and stand there. <laughs> well, they, they, and they talk about, you know, uh, well, coming up with a series, you know, and they, you have to decide, okay, first of all, do you want to get in the gallery? Well, then a lot of galleries, they want you to have a, a body of work of a particular style. And that's what they look for. If that's what you want. Then, okay. But if that's not your <laughs> ultimate goal, then you're at a at a creative stage now of uh, experimental, you know, and so why not have fun with it? Because if you get yourself tied down into one or the other, you you get depressed and you won't continue, right? So that's what I feel, you know, I feel like. So I started out thinking about, okay, I'm going to do a series, I'm going to do this, and then I just I was just getting depressed, you know. So now I just. I create what I want <laughs> and I never run, I never run out of ideals. Never. My own mother asked me one time, I said, how do you, how do you come up with these ideals? I said, it's called life, mom. Well, Diane, how did you pick a style and stay there? Did you always just pick a style and that was it? Did you... um, I don't know that I ever picked it. It kind of evolved from years and years and years of working and it kind of it's kind of just how it comes out i mean i'm i mean i went through periods where i was doing abstract stuff i went through you know super realism i went through um i mean i when i started college i went in as a sculpture major yeah and I've done sculpture too <laughs> and and the sculpture teacher loved me. <laughs> he well, says, you need to be a sculptor. I what do you changing. do as a painter? I said, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I ended up changing my major. Um, and I was a printmaking major for probably the majority of my college career. And But d for doing printmaking, I also took photography. And I had, you know, I mean, they had other classes I was interested in. I took weaving. I took... Um, ceramics i took jewelry i took all kinds of different things i was just exploring i took wood i mean i, I got into i was going to take a jewelry class and just missed it because i didn't have like 15 dollars, and i should have gone ahead and taken that class gotten the 15 dollars from somewhere and taken that class i really should have because I would have either gotten that out of my system or it would have been a real life's work by now. Uh, imagine, you know, if I had been making jewelry since I was 25. <laughs> but the point is, I mean, I tried all different kinds of arts. Like, I mean, I still yeah. have a pottery wheel. I still have my loom. I still, I still spin. I spin, I make yarn, you know, spin yarn. I mean, I still do that stuff, but it's not my main focus. So I re actually didn't have a whole lot of painting when I was in college. Most of my, I had the majority of um, life drawing. I had a lot of life drawing. So, which yeah. came in handy in printmaking, because in printmaking, things are more um, line and, you know, more permanent. <laughs> you can't change things too easily you know when you're doing prints but um I, you know and it, even after college i mean i was i had a job for a while weaving screens for antique radios cool you know like 
Wow. Yeah, the cloth that the was yeah, on the cloth that goes on the over the speakers. Yeah, over the speaker. Yeah, I was doing that for I don't know, a couple of years, I guess. Um, I mean, I have had all kinds of weird. <laughs> I had I, one of the I, first jobs I ever had was making slingshots in a slingshot factory in California. <laughs> 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 but uh, as far as the arts go, I mean, I've tried, you know, all kinds of different crafts and arts and um, anything creative. I mean, I've, I've mm -hmm. done done just about all of it that I can think of. And it just came down to, you know, what was available and what the kind of, like, right now the space I have isn't, I don't have enough space to do, like, a lot of printmaking. Mm -hmm. So I started, that's one of the reasons I started painting again, because I just didn't have the space for a lot of the other things. So, but just from doing it and, and my, I guess my style has developed over. Have you ever seen a picture course. of one of those scrap boxes? Clot, have you, I think I'm saying it right. It's one of those closets that opens up and opens up and opens up into the room. And it's like a big. It's like a big, to me, it would, a dream come true sitting right here. <laughs> it houses all your art supplies and your, oh, yeah, your yeah. supplies and it's stuff. Yeah. And uh, it, it sounds like you need one of those in that room you're sitting in. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you have to work with what's available. and But I think yeah. your style kind of just, you, you know, you have to put in a lot of work before it gets to your to where you are doing your own thing like you have yeah. to go through all that experimentation and then, i know because the way um, i was painting when i quit i'm i can't paint like that now well that's like i you're, you're not the same person you were 12 years ago you're a different person now yeah, i know so but i miss that painter in a different way so I, mean, I miss that painter <laughs> i miss how she's i miss that girl i want her to paint like that again I don't know how to get her back. I want her back. I have. I, I'm very fortunate. I had <laughs> a few pieces of artwork that I did a long time ago when I was a kid, and then you know only one or two pieces. And uh, uh, I'm gonna have to bring my first painting I made to, and, to see. And uh, Diane's right. I'm not making art now anywhere close to that. Some of the drawings I did, oh, were just outstanding, and. I wish I could draw like that again, but at the same time, my art has, uh, it's, uh, like Diane says, I'm not the same person I was then. It's, uh, it, it's achieved a different level and it's talk about style. Uh, I never intentionally tried to come up with a style when I started because I went through a period of almost 20 years of not really creating any, um, uh, art traditional in a sense with pen, pencil and paper, pen and ink or water or watercolors or paints. I did a lot of digital art. I was really big into, you know, doing digital art and digital manipulation and everything, but it wasn't for sale. It was because I had to create art for my internet radio station for what they call the album covers for the pod, different podcasts, you know, so I would whip something up here or there. And uh, thankfully my daughter's, have you know, encouraged me to uh, start pursuing a professional career. And when I think back, okay, I started this in 2017 and I look at where I'm at now. I just, I pinch myself. Am I in a dream? Am I dreaming? Is this really happening? <laughs> and it's all due. I've got to give credit. It was due to Paul Klein. You know, he motivated me maybe because I took his course with the thinking of, could I pursue the art of at, at a professional level? Could I do that? Was it worth it? And uh, he motivated me and, and got me excited. And yes, yes, you can. You can do it. it. Doesn't make any difference what kind of artist you are, what kind of art you create. You can achieve a rewarding career as an artist. So that got me started. And then, of course, I went on and found uh, other mentors and listened to their, you know, their speeches and their talks and started pursuing these different things. And that's why with, when I, Sergio uh, Gomez, when he presented his, tri his uh, pyramid, his triangle, 
it got me to thinking, oh, my God, me, Diane, and Constance, we are doing that. We have been doing that for the last two years. So us meeting, just meeting here every week and talking about our woes and troubles and and theories and art and styles like and sharing our stories with each other it's moving us along and an open invitation to any other artists that might be listening to this podcast please if you want to join in the fun if you want to achieve in your art if you want some help if you want some some motivation sometimes we talk about specific strategies sometimes we don't please you're welcome uh, I'm going to create, if I get time, I'm going to create a page. I'm going to start posting our recommended videos. So you can, I'll, I'm not going to announce the uh, domain site yet because it's not up. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have it by next week. And I will announce it and then you can go to that, follow along. And if you want to learn more, if you want to get inspired, you can join us. Ain't that right, Diane? Constance? We don't bite, no? <laughs> no, we don't bite. Uh, or we don't record a video, but we meet in a video conference on the Zoom video system. So we can see each other. Body language is good. You know, we can see our, you know, react to our, uh, you know, uh, expressions. But uh, we record the audio, a portion of our, we used to meet for about an hour, and we record just a portion of the uh discussion for the podcast and that's only been this last year that we started doing it like i said we're up to you know episode 34 now now let's finish up with talking a little bit about our goals and holding each other accountable and you got any new goals for uh for this month well i'm i've been working on uh recently even but for i'm gonna be doing this for a while i guess i'm trying to get my the admin part of my business a little bit under better control and more um, organized, which is no fun at all for me, but <laughs> it's stuff that has to get done and I've just kept putting it off and, you know, it's Absolutely. like I'd rather be painting, but <laughs> Same with me. God, I hate some of this stuff has to get done. And so I'm trying to get pull, pull the rubber band on your wrist and keep and, going. You know, now, last month you you mentioned that you were uh, trying to get a hold of get a handle on uh, Mailchimp on your mailing list. Did you did you get that accomplished or partially or? or? Yeah, I've, I've got it partially done, but I've I've kind of put that on the back burner too because I realized I had to get some other things out of the way first. <laughs> so, um, I've been working a lot on um, on uh, Facebook, not. I haven't been posting things, but I'm trying to learn the system better so that I can take more advantage of the um, the tools and stuff that they have in there that you can use. Yeah, like, so, like in the last video that I recommended with Gary Vaynerchuk, and he says, uh, uh, just post. Don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to – well, I'm trying to figure out or learn the systems and like so I can um, get more stuff automated and um, that kind of thing. It's so a I don't serious have to whole once thing. I, yeah. So once I learn that, I can get it set up and it's it'll be more automatic and, mm -hmm. and flow a little bit better. Right now, it's kind of like or it's been you know whenever I get a chance to post something, I'll post it. But it's it's so haphazard or it seems like it is, I guess, to me, especially. I don't, I'm not consistent, and it's just, you know, not very efficient. So I'm trying to get more efficiency and more organized, all that stuff. So Okay, Constance. You don't see a lot of that, but <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> Last month you had a goal. You said to set your FASO uh, site up. You joined the FASO uh, group. Uh, did you achieve that? All right, can we announce your website address? Uh, yeah, I did not write it down. No, oh, I'm so I'm awful. Okay. No, that's well. Keep that in mind. And next week, we'll let we'll. All right, we'll, let me write, write this write down that, for next that, week, though. Next week's uh, episode. Be sure. I want to give you uh, give you some definite publicity for that. And um, so, in other words, you got you you got that all set up now. 
you're it's pretty much good yeah to go. yeah it's it's set up but there's not much there you know yet but it is i do have a web page there so i'm going to start putting uh paintings up um i'm not sure how they pay they pay through you can pay through paypal right people pay you through paypal yeah yeah okay i forgot i've been all over the place since then you got it you've got any any goal in mind for for the rest of this month and going into march or try to post more um and try to get some try to get um i've got so much junk i need to sell still and i need to get busy selling the junk again and um uh, i know that has doesn't relate to art but when i'm doing it on a regular basis it no, makes me feel good about the art you know because i still feel like i'm getting stuff done absolutely and right now i'm not selling anything and i need to be selling something you know so yeah i've got to get more art posted more jewelry posted more I'm absolutely it relates neglecting to the, since i've been sick and feeling better i've been neglecting the mundane stuff and i need to get cranking on it again <laughs> yeah yeah it relates to art because in our last uh, episode we talked about you know find funding you know funding our art practice that funds mm -hmm. your art practice so yeah it definitely relates to art you know um you know what i forgot to write down what was my goal for january you two remember Oh, I, I think, I think I it was to get back to mailing. I think it was the mailing list. Yeah, I I didn't really. I think I sent out one. Uh, I won't even go one near blog the post thing. and uh, maybe one mailing list. But <laughs> I felt I fell off the job. I don't even know how to make. <laughs> so I, I can't even go. I can't even wrap my head around Mailchimp. <laughs> Mailchimp is just something that just like. <laughs> <laughs> That's why if I ever make it big, I'm going to have to hire some little little nerd to help me with things like that. Remember, Kali, you know, KJ, you know, is in Saudi Arabia, you know, when we first started these sessions, she used to join us on a regular basis, and she was having difficulty with MailChimp. So I had a, uh, a, a private session with her and walked her through. That's the nice thing about Zoom. You can show your screens, you know, and I walked her through and some, the way I do it. And she said that was real helpful. Maybe we need to do that constantly. Maybe we need to set up a, an appointment. I'll be, you know, walk you through it. Cause I don't, I don't, use, I don't use all the melt. See MailChimp offers so many features and that's what blows people's minds. It gets it my, take much to blow mine. <laughs> my boggling, you know, and there, you don't have to use all those features. It's like too many decisions to have to make. It's no, like, do I need that? What is that for? Do I have to have all these things? You know, they make you feel like you have to fill out every little thing of information or you're not going to get it. <laughs> and you don't have to. So, uh, I'll, I'll walk you through with, with how, how I, cause I use MailChimp for our mailings are to each other, you know, for our announcements. Yeah, I know you do. And I'll, I'll just, uh, we'll, ha we'll have to hold, set up a, a private session and I'll, uh, I'll be glad to uh, walk you through and show you how. And I think, uh, I think you might, uh, you know, pick up and, uh, you know, get some use out of it. You know, okay. um, my goal for, the rest of this month is to continue what I'm, I, you know, I said for the new year, the goal was uh, to increase my uh, art production. And I think I've done that. I need to get back to it. I did uh, three pieces this last week and I'm going to try to do three or four pieces this week and to uh, continue uh, entering uh, these uh, contests and exhibitions. And uh, yeah, I want to do some of that this year too. This, you know, so contest. So that's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's moving right along and it's sad. Uh, Stephen Bauman, you know, his recommendation, which got, got me started in these contests, he said, enter work, create art specifically for the contest. And this will help improve your art. Well, it's worked, but he said, and if you win, then that's even better. Well, now I'm still, I'm creating art specific for the contest, but now I want to win because I've won and I want to win more. And when I don't win or when I don't get accepted, I get depressed. <laughs> I don't do that. But I, but I don't stop. I keep on going, though. You know? well, well, that's a good I mean, way last to week go. I entered three, you know, and I got the notifications. I wasn't accepted. That's all crap. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
win some, but, you lose some. But that, you know, hey, that's uh, that's part of the, you know, the deal. We, I used to get upset every time they wouldn't let me in the shrimp festival in uh, Dolphin, Alabama. <laughs> Not Dolphin, Alabama. It was in Gulf Shores. <laughs> they, would, they wouldn't let me in. And all of a sudden, at the last minute, hey, <laughs> get your stuff together. You're going to be in the shrimp festival this year. And I was going, <laughs> <laughs> the gosh, don't do that. I know. I know. But that's how I felt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. I'm going to have to make sure when I edit this, I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. Give everybody down. I'm like a crazy person. Get ready. Out of <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Okay, well, that's about uh, that's about it. I guess our tip of the week is, uh, you know, persistence, crawl, baby steps, and then you start walking and keep on going, keep on creating the art and everything. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 34 for February 17th, 2020, and I've been here talking to my best artist friends, uh, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and... Uh, Bye-bye, Diane. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Bye, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone, and thank you for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt, and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constant Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.